<clears throat> All right, we're ready to go. Okay. So today is May 12th, as we just decided. <laughs> Um, I am the interviewer for today, Brooks Ebrich, and we're interviewing Jesus Benitez, Chuy Benitez. Um, he's graduating this year in a matter of in, days, actually. Yeah, this coming Sunday. And it's 2005 from the University of Notre Dame. And what are you graduating with? I'm graduating uh, arts and letters, um, studio, art studio uh, major in photography. Okay, good. So we have his show up now in Galleria America. It's called Pasatiempos de la Frontera. Mm -hmm. But before we get to the actual exhibit, I'd kind of like to have a little background about mm -hmm. you for our, our viewers. OK. Um, my background is I was born and raised in El Paso. Um, and my family has just been on um, the border just for generations. Um, I guess starting with my dad's side, I um, they go back, I don't even know how many generations, but um, I guess my great-grandfather was, uh, they actually have been kind of political just around the border. Um, my great-grandfather was the mayor of Juarez um, just back in the day, like early, I want to say even, you know, going into, the, going into the 1900s or, you know, right around turn of the century, um, 1900s. And, um, from what I know, my grand my grandmother's actually showed me, you know, like this written document that they that they've kept and have, and it's like a colored Xerox copy um, of how they say, you know, oh, he was the mayor, and supposedly he brought soccer to the area, and so um, so those are like the two little tidbits that I know as far as family history, like you know, as far as I can know, um, and it was. My grandparents on both sides of the family were the ones who moved over to El Paso. They had both been living in Juarez, uh, previous generation, moved over to El Paso uh, with my grandparents. And so, but my dad was born in Juarez. I don't, um, I can't, I think my mom was also, was born in the States. So I'm like a one and a half. Like, I don't really consider, like it's kind of, you know, back and forth between yeah, whether I'm a first generation American or a second, so I say one and a half, like just to just to divide it up. Cut the difference. Um, and um, I still have family that lives. I mean, it was just my grandparents that came over on both sides. So I still have, on my dad's side, a lot of them still live in Juarez. And um, and with my mom's side, most, most everyone has kind of moved over to the States. Or some of them are actually, are or were out in California. So it's, um, so that's, I guess, my whole deal with the border. I've been there for generations. Mm -hmm. And um, been there all my life, and then just came up here to Notre Dame. I uh, followed my sister, who actually came here and graduated in 2002. Um, she graduated with a math degree, and then went off to Houston, which is actually where I'm going to be going for grad school also, uh, University of Houston. And that's pretty much, pretty much it. So how did you become involved in art then? If you, I mean, your sister's on the opposite end. Did your parents yeah. influence you, your um, life in, in El Paso? Or? I've, I've, I would say that my dad had a little influence. He, he is actually like the, the photographer, the camera guy of the family. Like he always has the camera. He's always going, OK, OK, it's time for the family picture. And you know, and he put everybody in. Um, I think there was this point in high school where I got to just wanting to take pictures. I don't know what it was. I saw people just around me always, you know, oh, taking pictures. And, oh, they had, you know, um, they would come back and, you know, they'd have all these pictures that I wouldn't realize had been taken. And, you know, you're like, well, I wish I had those. And so I just started picking up a camera then. You know, I started picking up my dad's camera. And of course, you know, he would, like, all, you know, lend it to me all carefully. <laughs> and, um... But it started in high school with that, and I also started actually wanting to make websites. And that's where the digital came in, because my dad, as a high school graduation present, got me like my first digital camera. And so I'd have to say it was my dad, in terms of photography. And um, art, I don't really know. Um, my grandma says it runs in the family. like. Um, on my dad's side, I think my grandmother said that I have just an uncle, a great uncle or something who used to have a gallery in Juarez. So, OK, 
can come. It's, it might subconsciously. be subconsciously. Yeah, subconsciously. subconsciously. And so now you were talking about also going to grad school. Mm -hmm. So that's your next step. How did you yeah. decide to do that? Um, in trying to decide what I wanted to do after Notre Dame, I, um, I, I basically came across that I had started teaching people um, just in, um, within Riley, the art building. I, st I had just started teaching younger photographers subconsciously. Um, they would ask me questions in terms of, you know, like, I guess camera questions or digital questions. Um, I guess one big, one big jump that I did make first um, was actually switching to digital um, in terms of the whole art department. Um, some people had done it before. But I had just gone, you know, full out actually with the El Paso documentary um, and just went full digital. And um, so I just knew there was a whole lot that, you know, I just tended to, with the experience, I just knew that other people just, you know, hadn't had the experience with it yet. So I found myself just teaching people, um, you know, just small steps in Photoshop, um, small things, you know, how to use a digital camera. And um, also, I also work at, uh, did work at The Observer as um, just a photographer and a photo editor. So there was just a lot of teaching that I just saw myself doing. And, and um, it was actually my girlfriend who pointed out to me. She's like, you really like doing that? And I was like, what? And she's like, teaching people. And so I was just kind of like, yeah, I do. And so just from that, I, I just kind of said, well, I think, I think I really do feel that teaching would be good. So I'm going to grad school with the hope of maybe trying to, I mean, being qualified to be able to teach at the collegiate level, which would be pretty fun, I think. And so how did you get steered towards Houston? Um, it was just a random, random application process. You know, I applied to, I definitely wanted to go to grad school back in the Southwest. And so um, I, actually pick, I actually picked schools that are like in a big circle radius from like El Paso. Um, I even did pick um, New Mexico State, which is in Las Cruces, right outside of El Paso. Um, but I, I, I went for, I guess, the big art schools. Um, University of New Mexico, Arizona State, uh, North Texas, University of North Texas in Dallas, or outside of Dallas, and in Houston. Houston was actually, it was kind of funny, it was kind of just one I just threw in there as, as, a, as, a, as a choice. But um, when I applied, it was, um, well, when I applied and um, I guess uh, I got into New Mexico State first. And they said, you know, oh, we need to know by like April 1st. And I hadn't heard, um, I had already gotten rejection letters from New Mexico and Arizona State. And I hadn't heard from the two Texas schools or two, the two, um, North Texas and Houston. And so I was calling them up, um, you know, didn't know what was happening. And they finally got back to me. Um, Houston finally got back to me on Good Friday um, and was just like, um, you know, we're viewing stuff today, we'll get back to you. And then later that day they called me back and said, you know, it looks like you're good. Like, you know, I was pretty high up on the list and they said, you're in. And I was like, okay. Um, and from there, um, the graduate advisor said, you know, well, I'm going to have you talk to one of the photo professors. And the person, the photo professor ended up being was uh, Delilah Montoya. And so she, you know, when she got on the phone, she's like, you know, hi, I'm Delilah Montoya. Um, and we just started talking, and then she was like, have you seen my work? And just for a split second, I, I, I blanked out and was just like, I should know her, I should. And then it just hit me. I was like, you know, I had um, studied her, and we'd even had her, like, on a test for um, Gil, Gil right. Cardenas' uh, uh, Aesthetics of Latino cultural Art. Cultural expression. Or yeah. cultural expression, Latino art class. And I was like, just yes, like I've studied you, and it was that was like a neat feeling to, to actually kind of know a professor who was, um, I mean, even that, I mean, not just a professor I knew, but like a Chicano, Chicana, um, professor, a photo professor, um, just at University of Houston, um, you know, who I knew, whose work I knew, whose work I, you know, just had studied, um, and. Um, 
just from talking with her was, I mean, she was so friendly, so nice, and was just like, you know, was already kind of, you know, kind of poking me in the ribs saying, you know, oh, you know, we're going to be the, the only two Chicanos in the photo department and everything. And, you know, hadn't, hadn't you know, asked me if I wanted to come, just started kind of, <sighs> you know, just kind of, hard, kind, of ah, kind of started talking as if I was going to already be there and was just already, um, but more so in terms of, like, that she was going to look out for me, that she was going to look out for me and that she wanted, that she told me that she wanted to work with me and, you know, just wanted to work as kind of, Colleagues, you know, not necessarily was being a student, but just saying, you know, oh, you know, we're gonna, you know, go into Houston and take all these great photos, and it's gonna be great. And, um, and so just just from talking with her, having a couple of conversations, it just really made the difference and turned, you know, Houston just kind of being, you know, simple application to like, I'm going to Houston. <laughs> and I mean, it also helped that my sister was there first. Mm. So I'm just, it's kind of funny. I'm just following, following along. Following the family. Yeah, but I'm definitely going to stay in the Southwest. That's funny. Well, so talk to me a little bit about, <clears throat> you, you made a comment about, I made the digital crossover. Yeah. And um, if for people who are watching this and haven't seen, the show that's up right now is all digital photographs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's an explanation of how you got to that point. You had a grant and mm -hmm. all this. But what made you want to go from shooting with 35 millimeter to really this mm -hmm. digital mm -hmm. phase? Well, it first started with, um, it started just as, as an expense saver. Um, I had just, um, I had done, you know, all the research, you know, film versus digital. And um, with the help of uh, one, of my uh, one of my professors, Richard Gray, um, he told me, you know, start looking, you know, digital might be, you know, something you want to look at. It'll probably save money. Um, so I started looking into it. And, you know, one, it would just be a cost saver. You know, it's, it's for me, just still kind of being a student and as a learning tool, um, um, I thought it would be a good idea. You know, wouldn't have you know wouldn't have to waste film, wouldn't have to um, you know go through so many or go through all the charges of you know processing color film. You know, I could have probably processed it myself. Um, but there's also just with digital the latest digital cameras that have like the little back and you can check out what you've seen. I mean, it's a great, I, I look at digital cameras as a great learning tool for, for students. Um, like, they've helped me so much. Um, just knowing, you know, knowing right away that you get the shot is, I think, what digital really brings. Um, I guess it's, it's it, I mean, it is, you know, some people go, oh, instant gratification. But it's like, hell yes, instant gratification. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't have to do a second shoot. You know, um, that's just, it was just a time saver. It was, um, I mean, it was easier for me to go through the documentary, kind of cross off the list. You know, you know, finally, you know, once I was done and saw, you know, the photos and said, okay, this is it, you know, it was as simple as crossing off the list and not having to go back. And just, mm -hmm. I felt with the documentary, I, you know, I went further. I was able um, to know what I had right away and just, you know, as I shot, um, just kind of go down the list and figure things out. And I even figured new things out. And, um, you know, at the last second, I actually, a bit, I think with about a month left, I actually added, you know, said, hey, let's go into Juarez. You know, that um, all the Juarez photos are happened in the second, you know, in the last month of the documentary. You know, previously I had just kind of been warming up to the whole documentary feeling or the, um, you know, in El Paso, working in El Paso, making sure I knew what I was doing, making sure I knew the camera. And then just within the last month, I hadn't really considered it, had like seriously considered it. And so within the last month, you know, I said, hey, you know, I'm kind of done with El Paso. Let's go into Juarez. And so, um, you know, it really helped the documentary. I mean, this documentary in that sense where, you know, I have both sides of the border. Whereas if I, you know, I'd done film, I think actually the, the thought process and the creative process would have been a little slower. Um, so how did you start shooting? Where did you decide to go for your first shoot? Um, oh, that's a good one. Um, I randomly went, I think I started downtown. I had taken, for my photo one class, I had, take, I had started with, um, I had done a previous documentary in photo one. It was just black and white. And I had just been downtown. Because, um, I mean, that's, you know, 
Um, I actually spent a lot of time as a little kid downtown. Um, my grandparents on my dad's side had a jewelry shop there forever. And um, I guess it was kind of like babysitting, you know, um, my mom would take, take us there and we'd spend time with my grandparents, you know, playing around in the shop. And my, you know, my grandma would take us, um, they have a plaza there, really close, they were really close to the, the, the Central Park, the Plaza Park. And, and my grandma would just take us and walk us around and she'd, um, we'd get on the trolleys and just kind of take little bus rides around and go to McDonald's. And I spent a lot of time, I mean, from like, from before I can remember to, <laughs> you know, before, you know, like three or four, before you can really remember stuff, um, at least for me, and up until maybe I was like 10, I mean, I spent a lot of time down there, so I knew, I know downtown, um, and that's where I started, you know, just kind of shooting, just seeing what I could get, um, you know, trying to catch, like, action, not, not trying to, you know, have things, I guess, pose, trying to see what I could get um, just by going down and looking around. So as you started shooting, are you the type of person that would look at something and go mm -hmm. up to the people and say, so I'm doing this project, and oh, yeah. I'd like to take your picture. <laughs> do you mind, or would you just shoot and then say, uh, do you mind if I use this later? No, no. I I usually want people, I, I don't want to, especially in a place like El Paso, <laughs> you, you wouldn't want to take somebody's photograph without um, their permission. I had actually, with the first documentary I had done, I had actually had the experience of simply taking a picture in front of a storefront. Um, which actually turned out to also be a, or which next to it was a bar. Um, next to the storefront was a bar. And um, I had taken, you know, I was just taking pictures of the storefront and the bar owner got mad. And the bar owner was like, what are you doing? Why are you taking pictures? And actually like kind of dragged me into, like not like didn't grab me, but like, you know, it was like, come in here. And I was like, okay, you know, just kind of scared and you know, started talking with me like, you know, why are you taking pictures? And, you know, they you know, had this story of people who have, you know, randomly come by, you know, taking a picture and like jumped on a bike and like gone away. And I was just like, okay, that's not me. And, um, you know, at first they were upset because I was simply taking pictures. But once I explained myself, you know, it was even like, oh, you know, stay, have a beer, whatever. Um, so I figured, Explaining things first makes thing you know makes people just a little more happy and a little more I mean I guess appeased and more aware and and you know it also lets you know if they don't want to be photographed because I would say, you know I would say it's it's a lot more important to know people who do not want to be photographed than those who do um, so it's always good just to kind of ask. Did you run into that a lot? Did you have people who explicitly said no? I, I had don't. some. Um, I had some. It would. It was mostly, you know, kind of randomly on the street. You know, I'd ask them, and they'd be like, oh, "No," <laughs> or they kind of turn around. Um, and but most people, um, actually, for this documentary, my catch was that it was for the University of Notre Dame. Um, so when when I would say that, or I was, you know, working on a documentary project that's going to show, you know, border life to, and I would say specifically to the University of Notre Dame. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, you know, for college work, you know, sure, anything. And, you know, oh, it'll be up in Notre Dame, that's great, you know. Um, and and I, I did, you know, I would also say, you know, people want to know. Um, and, you know, people do, you know, Obviously, people would want to know, you know, want to know about border life because I just know that so many people just don't, you know, kind of up here in this academic environment. So, so you know, that was just the catch. You know, Notre Dame, oh, we'll, you know, we'll get to be seen. So, what was the most interesting photograph you took? Um, Either because of the image that ended up, yeah. like that came out in the end, or the experience of coming um, to that image. It would ha I would say the two um, that I that um, when I ex when I kind of explain um, or in explaining realized um, were the two I guess I would have to put it this two most interesting would be um, the Chico's photograph um, with th they're actually um, twin friends of mine and their brother and um, 
one of the twins uh, got married at, you know, kind of at a young age and had also has a kid um, that they're just kind of playing with in the, in the tailgate. And um, with that photograph, actually, when I had first taken it and shown it to one of the one of the grad students um, in the photo department, she was like, "You know, this is gonna, this is it. This is like, you know, gonna make you famous or something." And um, and if I I hadn't really thought about it, you know, I guess I hadn't detached myself. I guess you could say, in that I just saw them as my friends and friends and family. You know, I had um, I had intended that as a as a family shot. And what I guess I hadn't realized was, I guess, being in being a family shot, there's that topic of teen pregnancy in there um, with, with my friend and his wife and his kid. And I mean, at the time I took the shot, um, I, think, I think he, it was two years ago, so maybe he was about 19, you know, about 19, 20. And so yeah, it hits it hits that kind of chord of teen pregnancy, and you know I guess unknowingly I got um, actually a big topic in El Paso. Um, most people don't realize it's like El Paso is actually like the teen pregnancy like capital of the country. I, I, so I've heard, um, and I mean it is a problem, you know, growing up, or it, I mean I wouldn't say it's a problem. It's just an occurrence, a big occurrence, though. I mean, you grow up, you know, knowing so many, just, I guess, so many couples that end up, you know, having a kid at a young age. And it's actually, you know, a lot of people are like, it's actually still kind of controversial. Um, you know, people don't want to touch that. And they were actually surprised that I did touch that in just, you know, kind of a documentary. So, um, I mean, it's a, it's a great image in itself, but it also, has like that kind of edge that people might not be comfortable with, you know, once they kind of really look at it. And, you know, of course, others are like, yeah, you know, you hit that. Um, and another one, my second one I have to say would be um, the 25 plus years, um, where it was just, it was actually just kind of a simple portrait shot of, um, of this old sewing shop, I guess, store owner. And you know, it just kind of shows his shop, um, and it's it's such a simple photograph. But um, I guess just a lot of people are just kind of going, you know, kind of just have look at it and just go, wow, you know, he's been there for a while, and you know, you can see the wear and tear and the cracks and the water, um, water damage, and um, just the whole clutter um, of the shop. But you know, you also get the feeling like, you know, I'm sure this guy has this. You know, has this mess organized somehow, and um, you know, it's just it's also just interesting. The story behind that is that he's been there. For, I mean, he's been there in that shop for 25. The way he explained it to me it was 25 plus years. So that's you know, the name of the photo. And um, I think, in terms of getting, I guess, in terms of getting like both generations, like both photos get, you know, you get the teen, you know, kind of teen aspect of it, and you get. You know, kind of the older, you know, still working, older generation, working class generation of, you know, when they sit down and, you know, actually get to work, a lot of El Pasoans will just stay in one spot. You know, there's still, it's a huge city. I mean, there's over a million people just on the El Paso side. But, you know, it's still kind of like a local community where, you know, man, you got to pick your location because you're basically going to stay there and people will, you know, once, business catches up, people are just going to know, you know, won't know the area, but will know where your shop is. And, you know, you just kind of stay there because, you know, the same people will just keep coming back to you. Um, and you'll get, just get the same business for years. And that's his case. He's gotten the same business. In fact, my mom, after I took the photo, my mom was like, I've taken stuff to that guy. Like, I've been to that shop. And I'm sure it's the case with, you know, so many people since he's been there for so long. So. So yeah, those would be my two. Do you intend to keep doing documentary when you go to grad school? I I do, and um, it's I would say I I just like um, I guess what people call you know doing documentary shooting like in the real world. You know, it's um, I've also done my share of like 
art photography, you know, studio photography. I just don't like studio photography. I'm actually, I mean, the two things I'm big on are, you know, one, in, one is environment, I guess in terms of like a good photo. One would be environment and the other would just be like natural lighting. Um, and, and I mean, in the environment, it would be in keeping people like within their environment, you know, not separating, not having, I don't like really having the separation. Um, I like to kind of keep things like a little more, um, I, I also see like, the, I mean, historical value in documentary is, is a big thing or is a big reason why I got started. I mean, the whole reason the El Paso documentary came around is I just wanted to share, I just wanted people to know what is there, um, I guess kind of what, what my culture, you know, border culture has to offer or what you could expect to find and expect to see. And that's, that's, that's really how I got started. That's really actually my first kind of like um, excitement about photography was doing that and showing people, being like, look, here it is. And that's just, that's what photography has always kind of been with me. It's kind of been sharing experience, sharing things that I've seen and, and then, you know, using the photographs and being like, you know, this is what's here. Um, and you know, this is kind of what I've seen too. I think, I think, you know, remembering that you know somebody, you know, somebody was there to take the picture, and that it was, you know, I took these pictures. These are my experiences. Is where I like to keep, you know, kind of photography. At, I guess for myself. As we wrap up here, I mm -hmm. wanted to ask you too. So, how do you think Notre Dame, being at Notre Dame, mm -hmm. a place that's so far from El Paso? <laughs> How has this experience influenced your life, what you want to do? Uh -huh. um, I can start that out with, you know, in terms of being so far. Um, I've never, I didn't go abroad in a sense. And so um, a lot of people have always asked me, you know, here it's a big, a big thing is to go abroad, to go to like Ireland or, or Spain or something. And people have gone, you know, have gone, you know, well, why, why haven't you gone abroad? And, and my response always is, is like, what are you talking about? I am abroad. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it really has given me, I mean, seeing that we have students from like all 50 states and like, you know, definitely like both of the Americas are pretty well represented. You have a lot of people from South America, like Central America, you know, even like, you know, Canadians. Um, and you know you also get random Europeans coming over, and um, and you know in other places, um, it's really kind of given me a better feeling of kind of the way America works. It's like it's like a little America here. Like you see, like it's almost like going to Congress or something. You know, going to House of Representatives and seeing you know people from all fifty states. You know, kind of here and in like different quantities of representation. Um, I guess according to population, and um, so it's been interesting. You know, I guess the biggest thing that I've gotten to see is, you know, people's opinions of other areas of the country. You know, how people feel about other people, and how um, I guess people also choose to represent themselves here. You know, away from, away from you know their natural I guess home environments. How they choose to represent themselves. Um, and so I'm kind of walking away with that, like getting the feeling of how, I guess, how and what people know about, um, I guess, Hispanic Latino culture, you know, what, or I guess just knowing what the country knows and knowing, I guess, what other Hispanic Latinos know about their own culture or what, and also what's interesting is what Latino, you know, Hispanic Chicanos choose to represent or choose to show because, um, you know, a lot of times I feel, you know, it's, there's defense mechanisms that just kind of come in. And so, um, you know, I've just kind of felt a lot of people just kind of tend to, when they're away from home, they just sometimes be exclusive. Um, and I mean, this, is, this isn't just in terms of minority, minorities, it's just in terms of kind of everybody. You know, they, they really kind of cling, sometimes too hard to, um, to like what they're used to. And so that's kind of been interesting to see, also see that, how people will just kind of, you know, um, there's some who, who do experience, you know, who do great things and experience and, um, you know, like 
going and doing you know so many service projects and getting so involved. There's just also some people that just hold on tight to just what they know and 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 don't and don't go out and you know really really experience kind of like what Notre Dame has to offer. Well, I'd like to thank you so much for doing this interview with us. Well, thank you so much. We it's really, an honor. We look forward to seeing more of your work. Oh, I look future. forward to keeping in touch with you guys. Great. Thanks, Julie.